Hi there, my name is Neil Blevins, and this is a layer breakdown for my painting called Megastructures Bernal Sphere 3. So my Twitter buddies Isaac Hannaford and uh, Raj Natem asked me for a few more details on how I made this particular painting. And since it's also the most liked image I have on ArtStation, I figured I'd give you a quick discussion of how it was made. So here's the final painting, and uh, this painting is from my upcoming Megastructures book which is a visual encyclopedia of enormous structures, uh, everything from buildings to uh, orbiting space habitats to enormous solar system sized, um, you know, engineering projects. And the book is currently seeking a publisher, uh, but if we don't find the right fit, we're uh, likely to go and uh, kickstart it this summer. So if this book sounds interesting to you, please subscribe to this channel uh, or follow me on Twitter and uh, we'll let you know what happens. So now let's get on to the project. Uh, so first, a little bit about what the Bernal Sphere is. So it's a space habitat that would be uh, floating around a planet. And here's the outside view of it. So a uh, big sphere um, with some other stuff on the, the top and bottom. And then here is a diagram uh, on its side of what is inside the sphere. So the sphere would rotate around this way. This is the way it's spinning. And through rotation, it provides gravity along the inside surface, where is where uh, all of your buildings are. So you would be here and you would get gravity pulling you down this way or if you're up at the top here because it's spinning gravity would pull you this way and so you'd also have buildings up here in a big sort of ring around the rotation of the sphere itself. And then gravity gets kind of weird as you start heading up here. The gravity becomes less and less as you start getting up towards the, the, the center area here. So basically what you have is you have a bunch of buildings and then this hill that kind of sweeps up upwards this way and that's what you can see here you got your buildings and then the land and everything sweeps up uh, in this direction as you get up uh, closer and closer to the center line of the sphere so um, started off with some 3d so this was done inside of 3d studio max and you can see these are all the 3d elements that are in the painting so we have all the buildings all the buildings are very simple just block shapes and then uh, this is the interior surface of a, a sphere. And then this stuff down here is a bunch of tiny little trees. And these were going to be so small that it made sense uh, to just make them basically be these little spheres that have noise on them. Because you don't need any more detail than that considering that we're going to see them from um, so far away. And just to show off how I um, placed this, uh, the little spheres, uh, so this is just a little test um, scene I have with a curved surface and this um, uh, little, you know, fake tree here. So I wrote a script uh, a while back, and this is an object painter script. And the idea is it allows you to paint objects onto other objects. So um, I go here and I say I want to paint on this object. And then I go here and I say I would like to paint with that object. And then there's a bunch of uh, different parameters in here, including a bunch of random variation. So in this case, for example, uh, every time you paint one of these things, it'll scale between 50% of its size or 150%, just so the trees aren't all the same size. And then if you go down here to place and then paint, I can paint various trees on the surface. Or if I don't want to just place them, I can do a brush and then the brush allows me to just sort of drag and put a bunch of stuff onto the surface with different controls for like density, like how many of these get placed, how quickly and that kind of stuff. So I, I just basically took the surface, uh, the inside surface and sprayed a bunch of trees using this technique uh, on the surface to get my little tiny forest. So here's the texture map, which I applied to the inside of the 3D sphere. And um, what I did was I went to various map websites and I got satellite imagery that I pieced together uh, to make this texture map. And, um, you know, I added stuff and removed stuff. And uh, in fact, you can actually see there's sort of a duplicate area here and here. Um, but it doesn't matter that that's in the texture map because you can't see it in the 3D scene. And as long as you can't see it in the final image, um, the texture map can have whatever it has. So once I was happy with the land and the water, um, I then went in and I made a very simple set of circles for all of these paths that were going to be around the buildings. And I lined them up. Uh, they were in different layers and I moved them around until they lined up properly with the buildings that were in 3D. And then once I was happy with that configuration, I went back and I added more detail to them, like, you know, to make them look a little more futuristic, adding all these extra details to the various paths. 
And then once that was all done, I then took that and I took this texture map and I applied it uh, to the 3D image and then did this render. And um, one thing to note is that I could have technically, instead of doing a texture map and applying it in 3D, I could have technically just either painted the ground fully in 2D in Photoshop and didn't do the projection, or I could have, you know, taken bits and pieces of satellite images and used the distort tools in Photoshop to kind of distort them into this curved um, configuration. But really, 3D is very, very good for being able to make a flat uh, texture map and then apply it to a complex uh, curved 3D surface. So it made more sense to do that as a, a, a texture map in 3D than to just take bits and pieces and manipulate them entirely in 2D uh, to get the final result. So next, because these buildings are pretty flat, I decided to paint them in 2D in Photoshop uh, rather than doing them in uh, in full 3D. So here's an example. Uh, here's the, the 3D of the main building. And then here is the painted element I made in 2D, which then got put uh, in Photoshop onto the building. And now let's go over to Photoshop quickly, and I'll show you some of these layers. So here we are in Photoshop, and uh, here is the 3D building here, and then here, this B3 group, is all of the stuff that gets applied um, painted-wise to this building. So I'll just go through a few of these layers to show you generally what I did. So for example, um, added a few little painted sort of tech elements, and a few more up over there, uh, a few going um, in uh, perspective over that way. Then you can see here some small little details I start putting in just to give uh, sort of a base uh, so it's not just pure white in this area. Then this is a little bit of a photograph of a real building um, that I dropped in because it looks kind of interesting and futuristic like some sort of tech cylinder or something like that. Uh, a little bit more uh, sort of paneling uh, around this side. Then this is a vent that um, I probably took a photo of years ago um, on the uh, the wall of a building or something like that, and I just duplicated it up. Then those are the circles, uh, which were just uh, hand painted, or well, I mean, I used the uh, the, the lasso tool uh, in order to select the area and then uh, stroke it. And you also notice in here that there's a bevel and emboss, and that creates that little edge you see there where it gets light here and then dark there. And then more inside circles, some slots in there, and then a stripe just to add a little bit of color to the outside of the building. Then next is the lower floor, which is basically just a series of uh, a panel texture placed on the outside. Then here's the glass, which is a, again a series of a whole bunch of different layers, sort of building up a gradient on there and fixing the gradient, and a little more light at the top. Then start adding these little sort of reflective areas, some little panel-y, greebly looking things to make it look a little more like some sort of high-tech glass. A few more, more gradient work, then some color correction, very soft reflection. This is um, screened and it is of actually the image itself. Um, the more final image that I did, I just placed this on top of this as a, a reflection in order to uh, make it seem like it's, it's reflecting the environment. And then a uh, little stuff around the edge. So chimney, same sort of deal as uh, the, the work I did there. Um, that is a little bit of extra hand-painted um, plants around the edge just to seat the thing because without it it's a little bit of a hard transition from here to the ground so just placed a few little things down there. Uh, the roof up here is a bunch of photographs of real roofs uh, from various factories and buildings that I, I uh, spliced together. Let's see this one very subtle just extra little uh, amount of uh, detail down there couple extra lines on the glass and that's it. So you can see it's just a lot of layers, little tiny details, little bits of photographs, little bits of hand paint, little bits of texture to, to make this uh, surface here. So now we're back to the main image and uh, with the uh, main building done I then did the other buildings and uh, those are done exactly the same way as uh, I did this one just with uh, different images and textures and whatnot. 
Um, also added a few little jets, planes zooming around just to, to add a little bit of um, scale and movement to the piece and uh, gave them trails so that it sort of leads the eye over in this direction. And then this is the final image after I did my final color corrections. So you can see a few differences here. Um, it's a little bit more contrasty. Um, I, there's also some uh, chromatic aberration in here. And then I also did a slight 2D fake camera lens distortion just to make it a little bit more dynamic. And then here's one last look at the final image at uh, the full resolution. So thank you very much for watching. I uh, hope you found this short little layer breakdown interesting as a little view into how I made this image. And uh, if you uh, like this kind of material, uh, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, you'll be notified the next time I post more videos. Or visit my website, neilblevins.com, and go to the Art Lessons section, and that has a whole ton of other uh, tutorials, either ones that are video or ones that are written down uh, that you should check out. So thank you very much for watching again. Appreciate it.